Hi, everybody. Um, good night. Um, so let me go ahead and start off by saying the reason why I decided to make this video is because I love making videos. Making videos is one of my favorite things to do. So I figured, you know, why not just go ahead and make a video? I am very under the weather. Let me just go ahead and start off by saying that. So I just decided to put some lashes on and fix my face a little bit. The lashes are not perfect. Nothing is perfect um, about me. But um, I just decided, you know what, let me just go ahead and put on some, you know, look a little cute, you know, you know, to make this video and just be fully transparent and be myself, which is something that I've always wanted to be and really looking at the little girl inside of me and searching to see who she really is and what she really wants. And it's such an amazing journey. The ups, the downs, the sides, the turning around, all of that. But today what I'm going to talk about is currently, and I will say this, um, this is October the 3rd, I think. Um, and I'm going to post this video in about a week or so, you know, um, because I'd rather post it in a week or I'll say two weeks just um, because I feel like it'll be the right thing to do um, because I know, you know, things change within a matter of days. And um, I know when I do make my next video and I conclude unto what I said on this video, it will make perfect sense with everything that I'm talking about. So I'm going to start off by saying life after divorce. Okay. I got divorced on September the 10th. So it hasn't been a full month yet on October the 10th. It will be a full month. And I'm just going to be straight, brutally honest about it. My divorce literally kicked my ass. Okay, I portrayed a role for a long period of time, like I had it all together, like I was healing. And to be honest with you, I was very sad because my divorce was something that I didn't want. But I had to walk away from the situation because there was no more respect. And once respect is lost in a relationship, it's nothing else there. You know, and I was with my ex for nine years, you know, so I was so used to a routine, you know, even when I wake up in the morning, I still wake up at five, between five and five thirty. My mind wakes me up because I was so used to, you know, being a wife and, you know, trying to be a wife and trying to learn different things about being a wife. And um, when I say my divorce kicked my ass, I'm saying this to any woman that is currently going through the healing process. Um, Please do not portray like you got it all together, okay? Um, don't act like you can't grieve, you know what I'm saying? Of course, you're going to have to eventually stop grieving, you know, but don't act like you cannot grieve. Nobody can tell you how long to be in pain. That's totally up to you. And you have to learn how to grieve the way you grieve, but I will tell you, some of the best ways to grieve and some of the worst ways because you are in charge of the pain that you cause. And let's see, I want my little thing to stick up, but it's not sticking up. Okay, so I will start off by saying it took a full year for me to get a divorce. And like I stated, I walked away from the situation. I was really in love with my ex-husband when I walked away. And I still love my ex-husband, but at the same time, there were a lot of things that was going on in the relationship and I had to really exit out for my peace, for my sanity. And I've never felt the peace that I have now. You understand what I'm saying? But at the same time, I still have to be willing to walk into my next life. And that's the thing about going through the healing process. I was so used to living... Um, uh, unorthodox life, you know, where I was so insecure, you know, looking up cell phones, finding out 
you know, so many things about this different person and that different person. And for so long, I was so used to that life to after my divorce, well, not completely after my divorce, but during the divorce process, I was still living like I was still in a marriage with that person and it was hell for me, you know, and um, just waking up every day, you know, thinking about that situation. And there are times where I still wake up and I think about that situation because a year is really fresh, you know, um, and I will ask some of my friends, how long would it take to get over divorce? And a lot of them will say, oh, it's going to take about a year. You know, and um, I try to find ways to get me to feel good about getting a divorce by trying to move on to certain people. And it just wouldn't do its job. I mean, it just wouldn't, you know. Um, I can remember I met this one guy. He was really cool, but it just didn't work because God just would not allow it to work for me. And I thank God that. It didn't because first and foremost, even though my divorce, even though my marriage was over, I was still married. So that just kept bothering me that, you know, even though it's done, I'm still a wife. So I'm going to still behave as a wife. So I had to completely cut that out. And then it was another guy that I met and he was a married man. So it was like, look, he's married. Why the hell would I even be in the cause of him leaving his wife and their marriage was pretty much over, but something inside of me just could not, something inside of me just didn't feel complete dating somebody that was going through a divorce. So I really feel like at the time that we connected because of the fact that we were in the process of getting a divorce. So I had to really break it down and let him know, look, it's nothing that we can do. You know, and, um, you know, it was a sad thing for me because I included somebody in my life when I knew automatically that I really didn't want them to be there. And like I said before, I did not want to continue to play a role with anybody because I was trying to get over my ex-husband, which was not cool, not comfortable for me. And I had to wake up and realize that it just wasn't for me to continue to do. And um, that's what I did. And now my thing that's so important to me is really facing all of my fears. And when I say facing all of my fears, anything about my marriage at the time, when I was married to my ex-husband, any of those patterns that I was so used to, of, you know, um, being so angry because of the way things were going in my marriage and saying things that wasn't right and, and just being angry and being so insecure and looking to see who is this person next and seeing that person, you know, trying to move on and allowing what they were doing in their life to literally hurt my life and playing this role like I had it all together when I really didn't. And I had to really sit back and face reality and that was the hardest thing. Of course, the enemy continued and tried and will continue and will try to make me feel and 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 I will say this for any woman that is facing this if it's anything that you did in your marriage that destroyed you because of somebody else and what they did please put a stop to it if it's anything if you were an investigator I was an investigator because I knew what was going on and that's a hellbound feeling inside where my emotions was fucked up. My physical, my mental, my spiritual was messed up. And once it gets to the point that those four things, okay, which is your mental, well, yeah, your mental, your emotional, your physical, and your spiritual, once you're feeling like that, and you're feeling like I'm still doing things that are causing me to be in pain. Even if I'm not in a relationship with this person, I'm still feeling like I'm still a part of that. I had to look in the mirror and see and really face the ugly truth about myself. I'm not a part of that situation anymore. Why am I still behaving in that way? Why am I still doing things to make myself dislike the inside of me? Why am I still trying to seek validation from that person? 
Why am I trying to figure out if that person is living the life with another person? Because the truth of the matter is, it really doesn't matter. And I can just even remember, and I'm talking about recently, you know, when you're talking to someone that you used to be with and you're trying to prove to them that you're moving on, that person can tell if you ain't moved on. Because once you get to that point that you're moving on from a person, you don't want to know what they're doing. You don't care what they're doing. You don't got to express your life. It comes organically. So I can remember just trying to be so tough and making it seem like I'm just so moved on and this, this, that. And the truth of the matter is I wasn't moving on at all. I was really hurting myself. Um, one of the sermons that I looked at, it was two sermons and I look at a lot of sermons all the time because I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God is there's a sermon by T.D. Jakes that's called fill your cup with oil. And I hope I'm saying it entirely, but it's just talking about an end. And when I tell you, when I listened to that sermon, it reached me, but I still was playing games. I was playing the devil advocate for a long time, you know, going on my ex's page and trying to, you know, see what was going on in his life, which all I was doing was opening up wounds that was destroying me in the inside because God already said there's no need to compare. And most importantly, when you're trying to move on with another another um another life when you're trying to move on to another life you know you want to make sure that you're not doing anything to open up a new wound or open up a wound that's supposed to be in the past because one little thing can trigger you to go right back into the past it's like a wound being healed and you take that band-aid off or a wound is trying to be healed and you constantly taking that band-aid off I had the mindset of always trying to see what was going on. When God is the only person that will reveal anything if you try to trust. And, and it's not even a trying thing, but with God, if you even try to trust him and give him a little bit of leeway, he'll meet you. And I had to realize, am I doing everything that I can possibly do to get myself over this situation? Or am I playing devil's advocate? The second sermon that I listened to was Sarah Jake's Tangled. And when I tell you y'all Tangled, that sermon just put my life in a different direction. There's life after divorce. I was literally divorced, still living like I was dead. And God has blessed me with so many things, so many different things God has given me, but I was still living like I was dead, being condemned about a marriage that I walked away from. You know, and it's a lot of women and it's a lot of men that walk away from things that they don't want to walk away from. So I was still hurt because I thought about what I wanted it to be versus what it really is. And what T.D. Jake said in one of his sermons, he um he had a discussion with these two pastors, these two married pastors. And um, one of the questions that the guy asked, he said, how do people get over a divorce when they're still intaking that pain of what happened in the past? And what T.D. Jake said is the reason why one of them move on is because one of them have gotten to that understanding of what it's never going to be, why the other person is still wondering what it was. And I had to get out of what I wanted it to be and how I wanted that person to treat me and what I wanted that person to do. I had to get out of that. And it's a very big dose of reality because once your mind is so used to being in a certain space and you have to get out of it, the enemy is going to tug of war with you, like literally tug or tug of war with you. And I feel like the only way that you can really heal from anything, anyone is by reading the word of God. It's so interesting because when I opened up my Bible and I started putting my hands in the Bible and looking for scriptures, I automatically started feeling like that little college girl that was reading the Bible and was so close to God. I just felt like everything was coming in tune with each other. And um, when I looked at Tangled, Sarah Jake, she stated, Pastor Sarah Jake, she said, 